Yeah, that would be good, buddy. That's my blood. That's my blood. It's a lot of my blood. I'll say. Come on, Drake. I should hope this train don't let go. Great shot up. Well, almost. Okay. Lovely. Move it. Drake, do something. Even if it's wrong. Hey, well, let me go back. Well, I guess that wasn't the way, was it? Alright, come on. <laughs> Try it again. Big ass rocks coming from. It's okay. It's okay. Come on.
Where the heck am I supposed to go? Supposed to grab onto the rail, man. Can we get to the place you just don't know what the hell to do? Just where am I supposed to go? It won't let me go back. jump through these windows? Am I supposed to get onto that rail?
Let's hope this one doesn't break off. Come on. Come on. God to get up there. Buy me a drink, sailor. Harry Flynn? Hey! What the hell are you doing here? I'm looking for you, mate. Uh oh. Should I be flattered or worried? Maybe a bit of both. <laughs> Come here. I've got a job for us. Really? The client is willing to part with a huge sum of cash if we acquire a certain object for him. And I'm listening. Now, you're not going to like this. Oh, no. No, you're out of your mind. Yeah, you just, just hear me out for no, a second. Flynn, we both know two people who were killed trying to lift something out of this and place. And one who made it out. Yeah, barely. I can't do this without you, Drake. You're the only one who's cracked it, and you know better than anyone it's a two-person job. No, no, no. Three, actually. Right. And speak of the devil, here she comes now. What? Chloe Fraser. Nate. Drake. Nathan. Drake. Hello, Harry. Chloe is one of the best drivers in the business. She'll take good care of us. I bet. Right, look. I've got it all figured out. Go in through the sewer. I'm loving it so far. That puts us in the courtyard. From there, we scale up the wall, run across the rooftops, and just drop down into the exhibit hall. Bob's your uncle. And what? Yeah, I didn't say when breaking through museums. I didn't, but go ahead. But that's it. An oil lamp. Yeah. <laughs> it's worthless. I don't get it. Neither do we. That's why we tracked you down. Well, it sounds like you're working for a nutcase. Hmm. Some collector who's got too much time and money on his hands. And by the way, this is not worth any of it. But there's more. How's your 13th century Latin, mate? Where'd you get this? Borrowed it from the files of the nutcase. <laughs> In Trebizond, we were set upon by thieves. Father, Maffeo, and I were robbed of our greatest treasures. This was written by Marco Polo. Yes, that much we were able to work out. Unfortunately, the rest of it's nonsense. Hey, hold on. So that it should not fall into the wrong hands, I concealed my great sorrow in the unlikeliest place. The light of the great Khan shelters the fate of the Thirteen. So I mean, it's just gibberish. He's talking about the Lost Fleet. Yeah. I don't know, someone want to fill me in? Marco Polo leaves China with 600 passengers and 14 ships loaded down with treasure from Kublai Khan. And he lands in Persia a year and a half later with only one ship left and only 18 passengers. Now, he recorded every detail of his journey, but he never told what happened to all those ships and the passengers. So, so somewhere out there, there are 13 ships loaded with the Emperor's treasure waiting to be found. Yeah, and that is what your client is after. Look at this lamp. It's covered in Mongolian script. It must have been a gift from Kublai Khan. The light of the great Khan shelters, shelters the, fate the fate of the, of the 13. 13. Marco Polo hid something inside this lamp. Something that pinpoints the site of the lost fleet. So... 
We're dicking this guy over, right? Damn Absolutely. straight. Absolutely. <laughs> you in then? What the hell? I mean, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> What could possibly go right? Great, now a tree's gonna fall off. We got in here, there's got to be a way to get out. I'll see you next time for part.